well, as Sarah said, I'm a convener at Southampton City Council. We've been on in dispute now with our council leaders for around six months. In April, thousands of our Unison and Unite members, council workers in Southampton, were issued 90 days notice of dismissal and re-engagement on new terms and conditions. On the 11th of July, 4,300 council workers in Southampton were dismissed and re-engaged on new terms and conditions that meant uh, remuneration cuts of around about 20% to many of our members. Now since May the 23rd, Unite and Unison have been working as one and have embarked on a program of rolling and selective strikes and action short of strike, including the work to rule, across the whole council. But also we've adopted a three-pronged strategy of political activism and legal challenge, as well as the targeted selective strike action. As far as I'm aware, we have had the longest dispute that the City of Southampton have ever seen. On the 6th of October, we called out an all-out strike of Unite members in Southampton to support the Unison care workers who were on strike that day. Unite and Unison have submitted a joint tribunal claim for the failure to consult and we've put in a thousand individual unfair dismissal claims to tribunal on behalf of our members as well. Jointly, we've staged a number of mass meetings at which both Len McCluskey and Dave Prentice have uh, addressed, where we've both taken uh, jointly uh, decisions around the strategy at every point. Politically, those mass meetings have agreed to work toward uh, the next uh, local elections in May to remove this particularly nasty Tory council administration. The premise being you sacked us in July and we're going to sack you in May. Uh, incidentally, on the 30th of June, around about a thousand United and Unison members from the council joined uh, teachers unions, ATL, PCS on their day of strike action over pensions as well. Uh, during the strikes, union members and la labour movement activists have delivered around 100,000 leaflets to residents' homes within Southampton. We've put out full page adverts in the local press and written individually to around about 25,000 Unison and Unite members who live in Southampton. Along with uh, numerous press releases and TV and radio interviews, um, we've obviously got the message out to our, the public as to why we're taking the action that we are. We've, uh, because we're, we've got rolling industrial action, we've We've had some weeks where we've actually given notice uh, on a daily basis and it's got so confusing to the council that they're actually paying our members whilst they're out on strike. But to be fair, we've been a bit confused as well because they get strike pay as well. <laughs> this activity, going door to door, speaking to the people of Southampton, has enabled unions to keep, to a large degree, a level of support for the striking workers. So despite services being severely affected, support is still there because they understand our plight. Since our struggle began, we've enjoyed the support of trade unionists, students and individual members, as well as uh, the two respective union executives. Messages of support come in from every corner of the globe, including the Ukraine, Europe and the United States of America. And we've had absolutely hundreds of messages of support from the UK and more than £100,000 alone for Unite in contributions to our strike fund. So, you know that speech that was stolen earlier, that was mine, so sorry if I run out, run out of time. Um, I, think, I think it's important to say what we've achieved because it's not necessarily, not necessarily that easily to measure. Certainly we haven't won the fight, 
we haven't got the council to do, to do a U-turn on the cuts to pay and conditions, but sometimes some, some of the victories are difficult to measure. I certainly understand that um, um, some councils have backed off from doing the same thing because they don't want another Southampton. Uh, John Woods, who might still be in the hall from Portsmouth, wrote to me uh, recently saying that Portsmouth Council did back off from doing the same thing as Southampton, not just because of Southampton, but certainly that was a contributing factor in order for them to back off. So I, I like to think that we've uh, given councils um, some disincentives from doing the same things in case their unions do the same as we have. And certainly I like to think that, you know, as the front line of building resistance to austerity, then we can give confidence to others to take similar actions in local authorities across the world. Sorry, across the country, maybe the world, you never know. <laughs> um, when the other thing that's achieved is obviously the council have come back to the negotiating table. We are now uh, consulting our members over there fifth final final offer and uh, with a recommendation to reject and early indications are that our members are indeed going to reject those proposals. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move right on to the end because uh, that, that was about a minute ago that I had a minute left so I think what we should learn from from the mistakes and from the and from the good things that have come out of our dispute is that firstly our members are willing to fight if we give them the confidence to do so. I think secondly, um, many of our members will understand the issues but we certainly have to discuss those issues with them, we have to educate them and certainly we have to educate people about the alternative uh, economic policies that should be out there. Since our dispute started, we've had, we've had further budget, I'll sum up, but since our disputes started, things are coming thick and fast. We've had further budget cuts, hundreds of jobs have been cut, and only last Wednesday the council decided to outsource all services by 2015. So the fight goes on, colleagues, brothers and sisters, and I for one, intend to go on fighting. Thank you.